this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. Today, pork time is going to be a little bit different. We're going to talk about hunting a little bit today. Now, as you can see sitting beside me here is one of my deer heads. This deer, there's a little bit of a story that goes behind this animal. Um, I've killed several of these deer in my life, and I like to think of myself as being a successful hunter, so. Um, I feel like that I can probably tell you a few things about hunting. As y'all saw in our last food plot video that we shot, we uh, finished up our food plots. Uh, we got food plot number two and food plot number three taken care of. They're up and doing beautiful right now. We're finally, uh, this, this week we're supposed to get some weather that's uh, a little bit cooler than what it's been being. So we're kind of anxious, anxiously awaiting that and get out of some of these triple digits. So, first thing about hunting is you've got to decide how you're going to hunt. What type of weapon you're going to use to hunt is going to largely depend on the area in which you hunt. Now, I've been fortunate in my life to have been able to travel all over the country to hunt, and I've been able to hunt in some very good places. I've never hunted on a pay hunt place, let me say that, I uh, just never felt like that that was a, was a true sport for me. I've always gone to places where I've had to go out into the wild and actually hunt the animal one on one. And one of the things that I have noticed over my years of hunting is that no matter where I go, it's always different. The animals react differently. They uh, the circumstances is different, the environment's different. Uh, I can remember one time I was up in northern Connecticut hunting around the sweet corn field up there. It was a 700 something acre sweet corn field and uh, the deer were just so numerous it just, it just kind of blew me away and being from the south down here when you uh, when you see a deer of any size you usually try to take it because you don't usually sit around and wait a whole lot because you don't get that much of an opportunity down here. It's so thick. And that's one of the other things that I noticed when I went up in northern states and hunted. Uh, everything is just so clean up there. The woods don't have, I mean, they have some underbrush, but it's nothing like it is here. Down in the south here, because the warm weather lasts so long, uh, you're lucky if you can see 20 yards in any direction just because it's just that thick here um, with bushes and stuff. and. And that was one of the reasons I loved hunting up the northern part of the country was because you could look in the rolling hills and you could see from one hill to the next. You could see hundreds of yards in any direction usually. And I really enjoyed that. Um, but I noticed in the northern climates the deer do react differently. They tend to be more deer up there than they are down here. And I don't know if that's because they're not hunted as heavily or maybe the environment is more conducive to to the raising of those young deer and everything. I'm not really sure about that part of it, but I, I do know that there's just, anywhere I went up north, there was just numerous deer. I mean, I have some videos shot where I saw more deer in one afternoon just riding down on some of the roads than you'd see in, in years down here, if you were out hunting even. so. The deer population in some of these states is a lot heavier than what it is down here, which makes it a little bit easier to take a deer up there. Now down here, um, you know, you've got to really put forth some effort. Uh, and that's why, you know, that's why I'm not a dog hunter, but I mean, that's why the dog hunting was so popular down here is because the woods are so thick that if you want to kill something like this right here, nine times out of 10, uh, you had to just take a dog and run them out of the woods. But with some of the new, uh, new management programs we have going on down south here, uh, people are beginning to take these type of deer more frequently. So it, it, it has helped to have the management programs down here. Now, I'm one of the fortunate ones. Um, I sold most of my land where I live at now. I only have 10 acres left. But I'm fortunate enough that I have 7,000 acres behind me here that's in a hunting club. Now, I'm not in this hunting club, but my land does join this hunting club. And occasionally, one of these deer will come out of that hunting club and come over here on my 10 acres, and it gives us an opportunity to take a deer. But 
we don't, uh, you know, we don't participate in this hunting club. And it is a, it is a, a very notable hunting club, and I'm very encouraged by the way they hunt. They only take this size deer or larger. They don't take anything smaller than this, and that's uh, that's some real good practices. That you, you'll never have deer like this if you kill out everything that's young. You know, you have to you have to let these boys walk for several years. Uh, this was a five-year-old deer. He weighed a little over 200 pounds, which was a big deer for my area down here. And he had a nice set of horns on him. And, you know, he was just a real nice deer. Now, the, the strange thing about this particular deer here is I actually killed him with a 22 rifle. Now, I've always been one of them kind that... Um, I prided myself on the shots that I made, and I always pr prided myself on how close I could get to an animal. And to be honest with you, the truth of the matter is, when I went to hunt this animal, I, I wasn't hunting this animal when I killed him. I uh, I had a bunch of young young does coming in my garden spots back here, and they were eating up a lot of my stuff, and I told my wife, I said, I think I'm going to go back there and climb up in my tree stand and see if I can shoot one of those young does with that 22 rifle and, you know, get one to put in the freezer. They were about 80-pound deer. They weren't, they weren't anything very large, but good-eating deer. And when I went back there, they'd been about four or five of them crossing the fence in the same spot all the time, and I I sat there. It was, it was bitter cold that day, and wind was blowing and I really didn't think I'd see anything once I got back there in the circumstances you know it got to be what they were but but as the evening would progress and nightfall would start getting closer I I began to the wind laid down and I began to hear limbs cracking in the woods and I said to myself at that point you know I said well here those deer are they're easing through the woods they're fixing to jump over in here on my side of the field where they can start eating and much to my surprise, in a little 20 by 20 clearing on the other side of my fence, this deer walked out and was just standing there. And luckily, when I hunt, I always position my tree stand on the back side of the tree from the direction that I'm hunting in so that my silhouette is hidden. I don't ever put my tree stand up where I'm on the same side of the tree that I'm going to be shooting from. I always use a tree stand that you can sit with your back away from the tree. And um, this deer walked out, and had I been on the side of the tree where he was, he had come out on, he would have seen me, probably picked my silhouette out in that oak tree immediately. But he didn't. He kept standing there, and then I was like, well, you know, this is not a good situation because all I've got is this little Rimfire 22 cartridge gun, and, and this big boy walks out. But I knew enough about the anatomy of the deer, that, and I'd killed enough deer in my life to know that all I had to do was puncture his lungs, and I could take him. And to make a long story short, that's exactly what I did. He turned broadside, and I popped him right behind the front shoulder through nothing but the rib cage because the rib cage on a deer is very thin, and the bullet made a complete pass through on him. Uh, and the, the funny thing about it was, it didn't spook him. He just jumped up in the air and made about one step backwards and he just kept standing there. He never actually ran because he really did not know he'd even been shot. And um, I could see the blood running down his side and uh, so I didn't fire anymore. I just kept sitting there waiting and it, it took about, it seemed like an eternity but it was more or less like three or four minutes and uh, his chest cavity as it filled up with blood. He finally began to stumble around until he, he fell on the ground there and uh, I was able to take him uh, and ended up with a really nice deer. Um, I, I don't encourage people to use a rim fire gun to take a deer because there's a lot of deer damage done that way, a lot of wounded animals, but um, I in my life have taken close to 90 deer with a rim fire gun. I've taken 73 deer with a bow and arrow and I don't even know how many with a high fired rifle. I've just to me, a high-fired rifle got to where it wasn't even a sport anymore. Um, I shot them up to 500 yards, and I—I uh, I mean, I loved—I loved the sport of hunting them. But and when I went up north, I did—I did—I bow hunted a lot, and I did use my high-powered rifle when I went up north. Um, and, I, and I was very successful with it. I will say that. But um, getting back.
back to actually hunting, the first thing down here, we're allowed to plant food plots. Now, as long as it's done agriculturally, you can plant a food plot in South Mississippi or in this whole state of Mississippi here. You cannot hunt over bait here. You know, we can plant a food plot and it can come up and grow and we can actually hunt the deer as they come out in this food plot. But I can't take corn and pour it on the ground and bait the deer and bring them in. Uh, that's just not legal here. Now we can set a feeder up out of eyesight where you can't see the feeder and as the deer come to the feeder you can shoot them. But we ourselves here cannot hunt them over bait which I don't really have a problem with that. These kind of deer here they very seldom ever walk out into a food plot in the broad daylight unless it's the rut and in South Mississippi here, the rut really doesn't take place until late January or mid-January, let me say that, to on up into February, and sometimes it even goes on to the end of February, depending on the type of weather we have. You'll find an occasional doe that'll breed in December or maybe late November or December, but it's not, it's not the norm here. And, um, you know, so that's what makes it so hard here. We have to be so careful. In my video, y'all saw that deer that was in the food plot there that had been eating up all the peas. She, according to what little bit of a, a analogy I've been able to do on some of the video I've been able to shoot, she, uh, her udders were full of milk, so she evidently has young ones somewhere pretty close by there. So we probably will not mess with her. You know, she'll, we'll let her raise her little ones and what we're kind of hoping is to get some video of her and the little ones actually coming out into the food plots and so that we can let y'all see the mother and, and the two young ones or one or whatever she possibly has. But now if I happen to be wrong and a little bit later on, uh, she doesn't show that she has any little ones and she's just a big old doe, then I will take her because she's she's a non she's probably past her non-productive years and you know looking at her i don't think that's the case but um there have been worse cases down here than that you know so um you know i'll monitor the situation as time goes on and maybe a little bit later in the year if she doesn't show that she has any young ones then we'll take her out because that's what i do here i pretty much i scrutinize the deer that we take I don't just go out there and shoot anything and I don't, I don't advise anybody doing that even though that is the practice of a lot of people. You know, if we want a young deer, we will take a young deer. But we don't go out and just shoot anything that walks. We do try to be selective about what we take. If we see a deer like her that I believe might have some young ones, we pretty much leave her alone and just let her feed and let her bring her babies out in the field and let them eat and, um, you know, give them a chance to grow. And if I happen to notice that one of them's a young buck, then we won't mess with him. But, you know, if it's a young doe in the group and she loses her spots and she gets up, you know, maybe, maybe say 90 pounds, 80 or 90 pounds, and we might, later in the winter time, we might decide to take her if the mama looks good and healthy. But we'll probably let the you know we'll let the young buck go to maybe one day he'll be able to grow up and be a little bit like this one here is. But you know, so many people just go out in the woods and they just throw seeds on the ground hoping that they'll have a food plot. And there's a little bit more to it as you've seen in my video. There's a little bit more to it than that. If you want a very successful food plot, there's got to be some groundbreaking. Now I know they make seeds that are supposedly the kind you can just throw on top of the ground and yes a lot of them will sprout and a lot of them will come up but you just don't get the good root contact and you don't get uh you just don't get the the nutrition out of what you're planting and if i'm gonna go the, the headache of planting a food plot i'm going to try to do it right and i'm gonna try to get the most out, bounty out of it that i can especially if extreme bitter coldness sets in a lot of that stuff will die if it doesn't have a good root system in the ground so you know, if you're going to hunt deer, and, and let me say this, at Deep South, deer is one of the things that gives us our red meat here. We don't raise cattle. We don't raise goats anymore. Um, we do have sheep, but predominantly, if we want red meat down here now, this is the way in which we'll get it. And due to the injuries I've had to my body here lately, you know, I'm not going to be able to shoot a, a big gun for quite some time or if I ever will be able to again. I can't pull a compound bow back anymore because of the damage to my neck and my rotator cups has taken place. So 
This year we've uh, we were blessed enough to have an individual give us a nice crossbow with a hand crank on it. So we're going to try this year to uh, maybe use that to see if we can take a deer. Uh, because one thing, I've never taken a deer with a crossbow. I've took a deer with most all other weapons, but I haven't killed one with a crossbow yet. So, you know, those of you who hunt, um, it, be ethical about it. Uh, try to be very humane. Uh, we try to make as humane a shots here as possible. You know, we don't try to make shots that are, that are just not feasible to make. Uh, we don't like to lose an animal. You know, if we shoot an animal, we like to make sure we find the animal. Because here, it might be in the 20s at night or the 30s, but the next day, even in the wintertime, it'll get up into 60s, a lot of times the 70s. And if you don't get that deer, you know, pretty quick, uh, it's not going, it'll spoil the next day. It's not like it is up north where you can just hunt them for the next day and hope you find them and then find them up in a day and they're okay. Here, that's not the case. I've, I've actually shot one with a bow here one time about the size of this one and and I lost him. I didn't find him until after dinner the next day, and uh, he was already bloated. You know, so things like that are kind of kind of discouraging when it happens to you. But you know, things do happen, and that's one of the things about hunting. You have to realize is, is you, you know you got to be you got to realize that it don't always work out that way. And another thing I like to point out that when you hunt, it's not always about the kill. A lot of times. I've let deer walk so many times just because I love to watch them. I mean, that's, um, I love to watch them. And now that we do YouTube, I'm hoping to get the opportunity to be able to video some. So we'll see how it goes this year. If we're able to shoot some footage of some wildlife, it might not be deer only. It could be other types of wildlife. I'm going to try to be bringing several series on different ways that I hunt here. If, if the Lord sees fit to let me be able to get some hunting done. We're going to try to do a little bit of squirrel hunting. Um, I'm not going to probably be able to do the bird hunting this year because of my neck and shoulders that I've, that I've had this injury in because I can't shoot the guns. But, uh, you know, if we're able to use a crossbow on a deer, we, we're hopefully going to be able to uh, maybe do some deer hunting videos and maybe just show some wildlife footage. Um, that's another thing here that we just like, we're, we're trying to get into doing it, just shooting some wildlife because I myself love wildlife. I don't necessarily like to see a lot of stuff get killed. I just like to, uh, I like to, I just like to watch it, you know, and, and I guess that's one of the things that I miss here a lot is we've got a lot of neighbors that have moved in some of the land around us here and with all the racket of the four-wheelers and the dogs are barking and stuff like that, the wildlife doesn't come out in the fields like it used to. It's quite common used to for me. I could watch deer every day. I could watch turkeys and stuff like that. And, and now it's getting to be a little bit rare that I see these things um, out in the daylight anymore. So we're hoping that um, maybe this year will be a little different. We'll be able to get some video of them. And, you know, and I know this porch time's a little bit different, but uh, you know, when you hunt this year, be safe. And, and you know what? My dad took me hunting when I was only eight years old. So got me started in it and by the time I was 12 years old my dad let me go hunting by myself so I realized in the society we live in today that we just don't turn children loose with guns anymore like we used to but you know if you're a parent and, you're, and you watch what you're doing take your kids hunting because that's a right that we're, we're quickly losing here in this country and if gun control happens then um, you know we probably will lose a lot of these rights and there's nothing like uh, young young boys and young girls growing up hunting. Uh, it gives time family, um, gives time with a child, with their father or their mother, out in God's creation and enjoying nature the way God intended for it to be, you know, done. And I always teach that child that um, it's not about the kill; it's about enjoying what you're doing. And enjoying the fact that God has creatures out here and he put them here for, for us to use for our benefits and not to be one of these kind of people that's just a poacher or a slaughterer or just thinks just because they see something and you kill it but that um, you know if you see something and you, and you need it to eat then, then take it and, and take it home and don't waste it use it for your family and um, you know that that's what we do here at Deep South Homestead we just we only 
take what we're going to use. We don't waste anything. So I guess today on Force Time, you know, it hadn't been anything really that deep or, you know, anything like that. It's just that I've had to, I've had to kind of sit back and back away from some things a little bit because there's a little bit of anxiety issues start setting in. Even with me, you know, I start having some anxiety issues about the things I'm seeing happening in this country. And we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to try to focus on a little bit more things where they can be a little bit calmer, things that we can enjoy a little bit more here on Porch Time for a little while. And we're going to, uh, we also have a new channel that's going to be coming up here. Lord's willing and we're able to continue to get rolling with this channel. It's going to be a Bible study channel. Um, and the name of it is going to be, I'll go ahead and tell you, the name of it is going to be All God's Children. We probably won't have a set time that will come up each week. It's just going to be whenever God lays something on my heart. It might be once a week. It might be twice a week. It might be every other week. I don't know at this point. It just depends on how the Lord leads. Um, you know, I want it to be encouraging and uplifting. I don't want it to be a channel about drama and about, well, I believe this Bible and I believe that Bible. I'm not interested in that kind of stuff because if that's the way it's going to go, then I'll just shut it down. Um, if, you know, if we can come together as adults and we can sit down and we can just look at God's Word and realize that um, it, it's about Him, it's not about us. And we can come to that agreement that... Um, that not only one religion is going to heaven. So, you know, kind of things kind of like that. You just realize that there's people all over the world from a lot of different religions that we're just going to be able to make it to heaven. And, uh, you know, even though I believe that there's only one path to get there, I, I think that, um, I think we can all worship together and study together without any kind of conflict. And that's what I want out of this channel. I just want a channel where we can share God's love and God's wisdom um, with one another and learn from the learn from God's word. So I'm gonna let Porch Time go there today and just encourage y'all to take a child hunting, be safe with it, um, and be uh, you know be be ethical with it. Make sure you make a clean kill. Uh, don't infringe on the rights of others. Don't trespass where you don't belong. Always ask permission if you go on someone's land. Even if you shoot a deer and it runs over on somebody else's property, go ask the landowner before you go over there because that's the way I do. Um, that's the way people do me here. If they shoot something and it comes toward my property, they will come and ask me, can they go back and look for their animal? And, and I don't have a problem with that. Um, that. To me, that's courteous. And I don't go infringing on my neighbor's land. and I don't go messing around with their stuff. And they show the same respect to me here. And that way we can all coexist co together. And I'm going to kind, of, uh, kind of stop there today and just um, tell you all thank you for all the support that you give us here at Deep South Homestead. And um, thank you all for watching our live streams and our videos. And we pray that in the upcoming days we can get this Bible channel off the ground and get it running. That you all will also run over and subscribe to it and watch us when we do that. You may have to set a notification button so that it will notify you because I don't actually know what days I'll put them up on. So, from Deep South Homestead, thank you all for all that you do and for watching us.